So lately I've been talking about the pros and cons of emulation, and despite those cons, clearly they haven't been severe enough to stop me from indulging emulation for things like personal enjoyment, saving the wear and tear on my physical games, and ultimately doing research or finding an easier way to capture footage for videos. But what I haven't really talked about yet is the software that I'm actually using to play emulated games right now. And the software that I've been using to emulate games is OpenEMU or OpenEMU which I'm not sure which is the correct pronunciation, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick with OpenEMU just because I like the way it sounds better. And as somebody who, again, is relatively new to really indulging emulation as someone who's historically been a physical collector, uh, I have to say, I feel like I really struck gold right out of the gate here by finding an application that was feature rich, reliable, and ultimately just had a whole range of pleasing options that made the gameplay experience really solid. So today what I wanted to do was just go through a brief overview of what OpenEMU is, where you can get it, and ultimately some of the things that I really like about it as somebody who, again, is just now warming up to the world of emulation. In short, it's a multi-platform emulator designed for the Mac operating system that can play games from a whole range of systems from as early as the 2600 to as late as the GameCube or the PlayStation Portable. And it achieves this on the front end by hooking into other emulators, which it calls cores. So when you fire up a PSP game, it's not really being played directly within OpenEMU, but rather it's calling a secondary emulator like PPSSPP, which is doing all of the heavy lifting of actually emulating the game while you kick back and play it in a very clean, nice user interface, which is presented by OpenEMU. So really all you have to do is plug in a controller, drag and drop your ROM files in, and you're pretty much good to go. And I say pretty much because you're always going to have some configuration that you have to do when you're doing emulation. It might be as simple as remapping a few buttons, or you might have to seek out a BIOS for the particular system that you want to emulate. But I would say 90% of the time, it's ready to go at any given moment. As to where you can get OpenEMU, you can just go to openemu.org and download it pretty much immediately. And once you've downloaded it, you just have to drag it into your applications folder the same way you would install any other piece of software on the Mac that doesn't come from the App Store. Now, to be fair, there's a good chance that the Mac OS is going to yell at you about running code that it isn't familiar with and trying to protect you from malware, but ultimately you can go into your security settings and go to the general tab, go to the bottom, and there should be a place where you can choose to open this anyways. And while you're in your system preferences, it would also be a good idea to go ahead and go to the input monitoring section and make sure that you have OpenEMU as being an authorized application to capture keystrokes so that you can actually use it. But beyond tweaking those couple of options, which really you just have to do because it's Mac's way of trying to protect you from yourself, you should be able to just fire it up and find the interface ready and waiting for you to sort of import games and get to playing. So that's what OpenEMU is and where you can go ahead and grab a copy of it, but ultimately there are a ton of little quality of life features that they have built into this and just a ton of really good design decisions that make this just an absolute joy to use. And here's the thing, Max ethos has always been, it just works, and while that's mostly true I would say, it's certainly not always true, but this will be the first emulator that I've seen for the Mac where I fired it up and it looks like they absolutely held to that mantra and tried to make as smooth, frictionless experience as possible for anybody who just wants to load up their games and go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interface for OpenEMU. All of your supported consoles are cleanly listed on the left-hand side, and as you click through them, it will show you the titles that you can play for that system, often automatically downloading the artwork, but in the rare instance it doesn't download the artwork automatically, or if you just prefer to use a custom image, you can do that too. Beyond the list of consoles, there's also a collection section where you can basically create custom playlists of games if you'd like to make a collection of, say for example, your favorite RPGs, regardless of the console that they were on, so that you always have quick access to them. Now I personally use the collections functionality as a way to keep a wish list of games that I have ROMs for, but would really like to have the physical copy. Because again, some games are prohibitively expensive or they are extremely hard to track down, but for me, it gives me a nice, easy way to keep an eye on the games that I have actually played, checked out, and decided, okay, yeah, this would be worth the investment, but also to remind me that I do not have a physical copy yet. Granted, not everyone's going to take this approach to their ROM files in OpenEMU, but hey, to each their own. Also, at the top of the screen, you'll find sections for managing your save states, screenshots, and a dedicated section for browsing homebrew offerings if you're out to find some new community-created experiences for the various consoles on offer. And then further to the right, you'll find a search field where you can actually filter through any of the consoles that you have selected on the left. So if you have a ton of ROMs in there, like hundreds or thousands, and you just want to find a particular title quickly, you can just type in the name, hit enter, and it will filter it down to just the title that matches that particular search. Now back to the functionality of actually playing games on Epony... OpenEMU? Nope, that's not right. Let's try that again. Back to the actual functionality of playing games on OpenEMU. You have a lot of controller options because it does support a lot of controllers out of the box. I don't know if out of the box makes sense to say, but you know what I mean. And even though it supports a ton of different controllers, I personally have found myself going back to the DualShock 4. It has all of the standard buttons that you'd expect, and it works reliably over Bluetooth for the Mac. 
But what I really like is using it with systems that didn't have that many buttons so I can map certain functions to the ones that wouldn't be used in the course of normal gameplay. For instance, you could map the click of L3 to save state and then the click of R3 to load state if you'd like. Or if you want to perform like a rewind or fast forward, it seems like the L2 and R2 buttons are particularly well lent to scrubbing backward and forward as you would through, say, a video player just for a ROM where you might have a lot of walking or some process in a game that you just want to speed up. So there's just a lot of flexibility, not just for making sure that that experience plays out in good quality, but also so that you can sort of custom tailor your own play experience in a way that makes sense for you. Now controls aside, let's look at some of the graphics options that you have in OpenEMU. Now I'm not going to do a deep dive into the graphics options because frankly I'm not qualified to do that and I don't know enough about it yet to really speak to it with any, you know, crazy degree of mastery here. But what I can do is talk about some of the things that I've noticed that allow you to tweak the way your games look within OpenEMU and some of the things that I've found to be particularly pleasing or useful. By default, games are displayed with no filter or shader at all and are listed as nearest neighbor, which so far as I can tell tries to offer a look that is ostensibly as close to the original vision as you can get. But maybe your personal view of how a game is supposed to look is wildly different than someone else's, and you want to add scan lines to the image or prefer a softer look to razor sharp pixels from the 16-bit era. There are a range of built-in options that you can play around with to get a look closer to your own personal preferences. Now personally, I tend to stick with the nearest neighbor setting, however there are exceptions. For instance, the fact that I can replicate the LCD of the PSP is pretty neat, and playing a horror game like A Nightmare on Elm Street with the VCR filter can look really, really cool, even if it's not a perfectly accurate recreation of how the creators intended it to look. Plus, I've always been of the opinion that things like scan lines, while maybe not technically ideal and seen as a limitation of the display technology of the time, actually can add value to titles by providing additional texture on what otherwise might be a very flat image. And beyond graphics, there are some other niceties in OpenEMU that I really appreciate as well. For example, anytime you close out of a game, it automatically creates a save state for you, which is incredibly helpful, and there have been more than a few times where I've been surprised to fire a game back up and find it right back where I left it. In a way, it's not too dissimilar from Xbox's quick resume functionality. Throw in the fact that any configuration that you do have to perform is done in a really user-friendly, easy-to-follow menu, and it's hard not to recommend it to any Mac user who's looking to play some old games with as little friction as possible. So is OpenEMU perfect? No, and I would say that probably no emulator would actually be considered perfect. There's always going to be some tinkering that you have to perform. But as far as emulators go, it seems to be one of the most polished, easy to use, and again, frictionless experiences that I've seen so far. And while I could probably go on at some length about other features that it has or things that I really like about it, probably the best way for you to experience would be just to download a copy for yourself and mess around with it. Because emulation, as with a lot of things, is probably easiest to understand once you just sort of dive in and start getting your hands dirty. Now, if you do have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. However, again, I can't stress this enough, I am not a veteran at this, nor would I consider myself an expert by any stretch. If you're really looking for a more hardcore, like technical deep dive into emulation, uh, particularly for the Android platform, you should check out a channel like Mr. Sujano, who really does this stuff a lot more than I do, as this is something I'm kind of warming up to, and it's kind of new territory for me. So definitely check that out if you want to do a deeper dive into some of the advantages of emulation, or really get into some of the tinkering about what can be done with it. And beyond questions, if you are like a veteran of emulation, you have any feedback for some of the information that I've put out here, or ways that I can improve on future videos if I continue to do emulation content on this channel, please do let me know about it because I would, you know, take all of the advice that I can get on this. As always, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch the video. It means a lot. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.